Good afternoon. Today we are here to celebrate our top properties and top a few of our top landlords in uh, Dallas and Collin counties uh, with a landlord appreciation luncheon. Ordinarily, we would be having this event in person and enjoying a very delicious meal, but due to the state of our economy and COVID-19, we're having to do things a little bit differently. And so here we are in a, in a virtual moment. And so we're going to just have this luncheon and pretend that we are all together. Um, hopefully you guys have your lunch right beside you and so that you can enjoy lunch because this is during the lunch hour. Um, enjoy lunch uh, as you attend our luncheon, uh, our virtual luncheon, I should I say. Um, so I, I, I wanted to open with a corny joke. As always, I am full of jokes and so I, I wanted to share one with you. So the other day I was uh, cleaning, fall cleaning, the uh, the kitchen and I saw about 10 ants in my kitchen and so I didn't want to get just get rid of them and kill them because you know they're ants ants have a purpose in our society so I um I found a cardboard box and I put those ants in the in this cardboard box that I made it's like a little makeshift box and so now I am their landlord and they are my tenants See what I did there? Ten ants, tenants, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll let you guys have a moment to laugh at my corny joke, but um, you know we we will be keeping the program moving. And so now I will bring on uh, Karen Hughes, who's the board chair for the Continuum of Care and for MBHA, to provide us with a nice welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the MDHA Governing Board, I'd like to welcome you to the third annual Landlord Appreciation Luncheon. As Siobhan mentioned, things look a little different and feel a little different this year due to COVID-19, but our intention for the luncheon remains the same, and that is to honor and acknowledge the landlords and property owners and managers that help us fulfill our mission to have homelessness in Dallas and Collin County be rare, brief, and non-recurring. You know, the answer to homelessness is simple, it's housing. However, we all know the journey to get there is difficult and complicated, and we could not provide success for our homeless neighbors without the partnerships we have with the real estate community. I recently heard the following quote regarding where we all find ourselves with COVID-19, which I think is applicable to today. And the quote is this, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I know what I am going to fight for. Thank you to our service providers, our landlords, and our property managers for your commitment to joining us in the fight to end homelessness in Dallas and Collin County. Thank you, Karen. Karen is, is absolutely right. The, the answer to homelessness is housing. And so we must focus on, continue to focus on identifying housing and so we're hoping that we have some landlords on here today that will step up to our challenge at the end. So next we will have the invocation by the Reverend Jonathan Grace who's starting to look more and more like that picture of Jesus that we all have in our house. <laughs> yeah yeah white Jesus. <laughs> Thank you Siobhan and uh, what a lovely joke earlier. Anyway, let's uh, bow our heads. <sighs> Loving and gracious, majestic, glorious, and homeless Lord, you know that we and our world are experiencing so much. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of loss. There's with COVID-19 and with the turmoil of our seemingly never ending political season, there's so much anxiety and burdens upon us. And so, Lord, that is why we are so thankful to you today that you have given us this space to celebrate and to show appreciation and to love one another. It's just what our souls need, Lord. We give thanks today for all these landlords and property managers and folks who have worked so hard to house our formerly homeless neighbors. We know, God, that you are a God of all people, that you care deeply 
for all of your children and all of your creation. And Lord, we know we fall so short in providing and caring for our neighbor. We know that you're a God who looks to the marginalized folks of our society. You write over and over again in scripture about orphans and widows. And in the Gospel of Matthew, you even teach us that you are a homeless God, that the birds of the air have nests and foxes have holes in the ground, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And Lord, we're thankful that you go into abandoned places to meet and love your children. And that when we step out of our comfort zones, when we decide to <clears throat> follow you into these places and to be welcoming, uh, that we are doing your work. Lord, you know, I don't know, but you know the faith journey of all the landlords and property managers and folks on this Zoom call. Uh, some, I'm sure, acknowledge you. Some are folks of good heart that are atheists or agnostic. But we believe that whenever we love each other, whenever we reach out and care, we're doing good work. And we believe as people of faith that we're doing your work, no matter what faith or lack of, of organized faith that we proclaim. And so, Lord, we give thanks that the folks here are doing the difficult work of caring for some of the most vulnerable, some of the most traumatized, and quite frankly, we can be honest, some of the most difficult to work with folks in our society. Because every time that a, a housing is provided, it's one day, one step closer for someone to experiencing the healing they need. And Lord, for all these folks who have done the hard work that is so often thankless and so difficult of providing housing for people to come off the streets and to live into the abundance of your creation and to have their own home, their own space and be able to have rest and be able to uh, reintegrate into our society. We give you thanks. We need a lot more folks like this. So thank you, Lord, that you've given us this time to love on these folks and to inspire them and to let us say thank you because without them, so many more folks would be suffering. So Lord, thank you for all these landlords and may you continue to guide us to serve our neighbors. Amen. Very well said, amen. Thank you, Pastor Jonathan, for that nice invocation. And at this moment, we will turn it over to David Gruber uh, to give us a word from our sponsors. What's an event without sponsors? Well, hello, everybody. Um, what an what an honor uh, to introduce our sponsors. Uh, I want to tell you that these uh, sponsors, uh, Court and and uh, WAK Management, uh, signed up for sponsoring a slightly different luncheon, as you may realize, and um, they have stuck with us uh, throughout this this rather confusing process of we postponed uh, the in-person luncheon twice. And then, um, then we uh, moved to a virtual luncheon and uh, they were unflappable. They were like, we're, we're, we're up for it, whatever it comes to. Uh, so I'd like to ask each of them uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, why they decided to sponsor this luncheon and uh, each of them, uh, you know, what they're, what they're doing out there in the community. Cause I think these are folks that everybody really needs to know about. So I'll ask uh, uh, John Gillespie uh, to go first and then uh, Blake Stone uh, to go second. And I will turn off my audio and video. Hi, my name is John Gillespie. I want to thank MDHA for inviting me here today. Uh, my company and I have partnered with and sponsored MDHA for several years. I was introduced to MDHA through our efforts to help our military veterans who were challenged as they re-entered society. Many of the military veterans we have assisted over the years had previously been addicted to drugs or alcohol and many were homeless. The Veterans Administration instituted training and assistance programs to help veterans integrate back into society. Our company sponsored many of these events and several members of our company have participated in the various VA events for these veterans. Our work with the VA helped us to form close relationships with Dallas Life, the United Way, 
uh, Dallas Housing, Metro Care, Catholic Charities, and with MDHA. Uh, and as a result of our cooperating with these various agencies, uh, we have housed many veterans as well as housed victims of domestic violence and other homeless people. Our relationship with MDHA alone has allowed us to house uh, over 80 of their clients. In addition to providing housing, we allowed our facilities to be used to host training sessions, meetings, and activities for the MDHA clients. We've held cooking classes and meditation sessions, among other things. Uh, now, except for income requirements that we waive for MDHA clients, our communities have the same high qualification standards for MDHA clients as we have for all our residents. In the rare event where an MDHA supported resident has violated any community policies, there is a caseworker available to assist us to resolve it. Now, prior to our involvement with these organizations, many of our property employees had not had the opportunity to get to know a military veteran or someone that has fallen into homelessness. The residents we have met through MDHA and VA and other organizations have provided the opportunity for our staff to have a better understanding of how we are all merely one unfortunate step away from being disadvantaged. My staff has heard me use the phrase that we can do well by doing good. There's a seeming paradox when you understand that pursuing your, your own self-interest is best done by providing value to others. And our apartment communities have sacrificed very little economically while helping so many people. We have benefited by having rent paid for these residents and sometimes food and utilities paid. But equally important is our staff has personally benefited by being a part of the outreach that helps those less fortunate than ourselves. MDHA is a preferred charity for both my donations as well as my company donations. We are glad to offer the small assistance we do and we are fortunate to reap the fantastic benefits of helping so many people. I strongly recommend that other multifamily operators take the opportunity to work with MDHA and other similar agencies to do our part to end homelessness. So thank you all very much. Thank you, John. Thank you, David. Uh, my name is uh, Blake Stone, and uh, I get to follow John, who was probably much more eloquent than I'll be, but I appreciate the time and appreciate, appreciate MDHA having me here today. Um, I'm with Court Furniture, and uh, I am part of the Furniture Rental Division. Uh, Court Furniture is a Warren Buffett company and it's the nation's leading provider of, of transition services for uh, furnishings, destination services, event furnishings, uh, apartment locating and touring. We have 100 offices and showrooms across the nation. Uh, we operate out of the UK as well, and we have 80 partners. We have partners in 80 countries as well. And, and that is the, the court standard uh, 20 second elevator speech. But what I'd really like to talk about is, is Court Dallas. I'm the district manager for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And uh, last year, we, uh, we made a conscious decision in 2019 to become more, more involved in service in our community more. And we're searching for ways to do that. Um, and in doing so, we kind of took a little bit of a shotgun approach because we didn't know where we were going. We were introduced to MDHA through our director of supportive housing at our corporate office, Todd Shell, and uh, we're excited to, to sponsor uh, several events and David's been wonderful <coughs> to help us. Um, one of our vision statements or our vision statement is everything is possible through service and court is 
uh, takes that quite literally service to internal customers, service to external customers, service to our communities. Uh, and while we have some national programs that uh, we're very proud of, uh, one being uh, <clears throat> Move for Hunger, where we've collected over 1 million pounds of furniture since the COVID-19 and uh, served 900,000 meals as a result. Um, Folds of Honor uh, to support uh, the children and families of, of fallen military folks uh, and provide uh, scholarships for the children. Um, we've just felt like in Dallas, we were looking for a better fit in how we could serve the Dallas community. And <clears throat> we have uh, been privileged, as I said, to sponsor MDHA. And we were also able to work with Interfaith Family Services for their annual home makeover for one of their graduates uh, this year, which was very exciting from mowing the grass to painting the walls and and uh, providing furnishings. We've worked with uh, some of the track programs in town for transition housing, uh, and that's been very rewarding. And we're currently working with the City of Dallas uh, Office of Homeless Solutions to provide furnishings for 300 uh, individuals or families uh, as they're housing folks over the next 12 months. And we're very excited about that opportunity as well. And uh, we're continuing to, to search. I look forward to getting to know more of you folks over time. And I appreciate y'all's time today. I think it's back to me. And if I could just take a moment to show my appreciation as the Vice President of Programs for both of our sponsors, WAK Management and Court have both done an outstanding job of assisting our, our clients, neighbors, uh, the people we serve with um, housing opportunities as well as furniture and we have received some feedback um, pertaining to court from some of the, the clients and the clients have really been thankful for the quality of furniture that court has provided them with um, especially with this program that we're working with with the city of dallas uh, with their rapid rehousing um, program and so one of the clients was just very very pleased and so i wanted to take a moment to show my appreciation uh, for both of our sponsors um, for housing and furnishing our clients new uh, units so thank you guys we really appreciate it next up um He's, he's already queuing up because he knows he's next. The Honorable Rick Grady from a Plano City Council will be providing us with the call to action. So take us away in your helicopter. Is that your helicopter? Uh, that was my helicopter when I was in the service, yes. Um, I was telling the panelists they were inquiring about the helicopter picture, and I said when my fraternity brothers, as they were graduating, were sending me pictures of their new cars that they bought. Um, I would send that picture back saying, look what I got. Um, and so I want to thank really all of the people that are on this call. I want to thank the sponsors. Um, I want to thank the staff. Um, all of you have contributed greatly to our community. Uh, obviously, you would not be on this call if you weren't doing something that um, made some significant change within our community. And, and so therefore, I, I want to make sure right up front that um, from a city's standpoint, we really want to thank you for all of the contributions you do to our citizens who may not have a home. Um, and, and so thank you from them and, and thank you from me. Um, to all of, uh, of us, really, um, we realized that um, homelessness can strike really at any time. And, and if you look at me and you look at my background and, and you look at my surroundings that are here right now, 
um, you probably say, um, uh, could this person ever become homeless? And in fact, I was uh, homeless once and near homeless uh, a second time. And the second time was probably um, uh, worse than the first because uh, when I was homeless the first time, it was just me. But when I was uh, near homeless the second time and, and really wrestling on the, on the precipice of falling into homelessness, um, I had a nine-year-old daughter and I was a single parent. Um, and so I had to look out for her and I had to look out for me and that was, it was very stressful. So, um, I know when, uh, I talk to, um, our citizens who are homeless here in the city of Plano, the stress and the, um, and, and the environment that they are going through. We know that the needs are great. Um, we have seen data recently from housing and urban development that simply points to the fact that we don't have uh, enough housing and we don't have enough affordable housing. And so we do know that there are issues not only in the multifamily area, but also in the single family area, um, both in leasing and rentals and in ownership. So um, the data that has been coming out recently shows that we are behind the curve um, and we are going to be facing issues. We have seen data from the Department of Labor um, as recently as this week that has shown that the um, COVID has changed our economy and has changed our employment status. And a significant portion of individuals, about 800,000 uh, plus um, in just the last report, filed their first unemployment claim. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, it's only 800,000, uh, as you know, out on the unemployment rolls. There's millions that are out on the unemployment rolls, and those millions are trying to figure out how they can um, continue to afford housing or are they going to be out in the street. Um, in the North Texas area, we've seen a significant change as well. Um, as corporations really have moved into Texas, and in a way, Texas has been somewhat blessed because of the corporations that have moved in here and have kept employment going. But we are not out of, of being impacted by that as well. Um, so really, as we begin to look forward into um, the rest of this year, which is very little of it left, um, and into 2021, we need to be prepared. We know that um, as the, um, uh, the midnight clock strikes on New Year's Eve, um, that there's going to be an issue with people that are in homes that may be right now um, in some kind of position where their um, uh, mortgage payment is being excused, but they very well could uh, be looking for another residence um, as, the, as the clock strikes into the new year. Um, we know that um, employment is not where it uh, needs to be in order to catch everybody that we have in the unemployment rolls right now and bring back the employment that we were uh, used to in the past uh, many years. Um, so uh, that we need to be prepared for as well. And so really, um, when I make a, a call to action, it's not only just to us, but it is to everybody that is in our communities, in Dallas County and Collin County, our continuum of care, um, in all of our surrounding counties as well, that we need to get the community engaged. We need to get the community to understand what the issues are with homelessness and how we can overcome it and how they can help us overcome that. Um, we know that there is uh, within our communities pushback at times uh, in saying that um, a, a homeless person is this or a homeless person is that. And I offer up myself as an example of what a homeless person looks like at one time. Um, and so uh, I can say to them uh, quite vividly uh, that people, uh, once they are uh, back into a sheltered situation and surrounded by good services and the wraparound services that we need, that they can, that, that they can uh, change and go down a second path in life and, and a new path in life. Um, and I say that to our council members of all the cities in our counties uh, within the continuum of care, because they are the ones that are making um, all of the decisions from a zoning case to an ordinance case and to some of the other um, rules and regulations that we follow uh, from a city standpoint. That we have to understand that some um, in our community have fallen on hard times and we need as a society to be able to reach out and pick them up.
And I say that also to our associations like the Apartment Association of Greater Dallas, who have simply done very good work in communicating out to their members to let them know that these are people that can contribute to society if given a chance. And so my call to everyone that's on here is not only to keep that charge in and of ourselves, but to keep that charge in and of our community and be able to tell our friends and our neighbors and have them tell their neighbors that these are good people and, and they deserve a second chance. We need to do what we need to do in order to bring them forward. I thank you for your time today. I thank you for all of the things that you do. And may you have a wonderful day today. And think of those that may not be on this call and may not be eating what we're eating today. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm having a Starbucks. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for that charge of Honorable Rick Grady. We'll now turn it over to uh, Carl Falconer, MBHA's president and CEO. Uh, as soon as he gets his presentation up, he will start shortly. Thank you, Siobhan. I'm gonna go I'll just, if he takes too long, I'll tell another joke, but he's ready to go. I think I'm ready to go. So let me make sure. Um, looks like that. Hopefully everybody can see my presentation. Um, I am the CEO for Metro Dallas Homeless Alliance. And first I wanted to uh, thank everyone for being on the call or on the Zoom call. And I also want to thank in particular our sponsors for the event, but also uh, most importantly, our landlords who are working with us. Um, you drive the, the housing that we put our people into and you drive our success and the success of the people who you're allowing to come into your housing units and, as Rick said, make a change in their life, a change for the positive and a change for the better. Um, so I want to say thank you to everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, just real briefly, about making your rental experience excellent. A lot of the landlords that are on the Zoom call with us today are familiar with what I'm going to talk about, um, but I also want to give everyone an opportunity to understand kind of what happens and what a good landlord and uh, social service or provider relationship looks like. There's three keys to excellent tenants, and they're the same keys that we have as providers or our providers have as the landlords have. Number one is matching interests. Number two is case management. And number three is communicating effectively. I'm gonna go through each of these. Matching interests. Our providers want what you want as landlords. They want the same thing. They want good quality housing that they can provide and have available for the clients that they're moving into the housing. They want a good relationship with you as landlords and they want to make sure that all of the interests between you and them are being taken care of in a timely and reasonable manner. Our clients want what you want. Most of you are aware of this. Our clients want what any resident or any tenant would want, and that's to live in good, affordable, safe, and secure housing. Um, work with housing locators and housing navigators. This is where matching interests come into play, particularly between our landlords and what we call our housing locators and our housing navigators. Housing locators are individuals that we use in the provider uh, industry or in the provider uh, programs to find housing out in the community. Their job is to talk with landlords and try to figure out if there are units available, when they're coming available, when they're coming online. And we also have housing navigators, which are the people who help people, who help our clients actually move in and become tenants and residents. They help with things like furniture and paperwork and making sure that they have all of the required deposits and everything along the way. They have the same interests that the landlords have as well. And help us understand what each unit can offer and the limitations. One of the, one of the biggest matching interests with um, the landlords that, that we always look for 
is making sure that we have good communication with them so that we can understand what each unit can offer and what the limitations are within each of those units. The best, the best tenant landlord provider relationship is the one where everyone is clear on exactly what the, what the unit can offer and exactly what the limitations are of what's happening in the housing situation. Case management is the second key. The case manager's number one goal is to keep people housed. Bottom line, that is their ultimate uh, reason for doing case management from day to day. And if you talk to case managers, they will tell you that they're looking forward to the opportunity to keep people housed. Not all case managers work or think the same way. Uh, unfortunately, when we start working with new landlords or new property owners, one of the biggest uh, misconceptions that happen is that they think all the case managers that they work with are exactly the same case managers or that they all react the same way. That's not true. We have all different types of case managers, um, some that do more intensive work, some that do less intensive work, some that work more towards employment services, some that work more towards medical services. There's all different types of case managers. So the third one here is to get to know your case managers. Understand what their strengths are and understand what their limits are. Again, that's about communicating and trying to figure out what's a good match for you. Making sure that you understand that if they're a veterans case manager, that they have a specialty to help veterans get connected to benefits and um, things specifically for veterans. Or if they have a specialty in mental health, they can help people get connected to services that will help them with their mental health issue. Communicate effectively. There are three parts to our housing process that all of our providers and all of our network go through. Number one is the housing location, as I mentioned, that's trying to find the units out in the community. Number two is the housing navigation, and that's helping someone get into housing. And number three is case management. And that's done by each of our providers across our entire continuum of care. The point I want to stress here is to try to make sure that you communicate effectively. Make sure that at each of these locations, we communicate between each of these aspects and make the experience better for all of us. It's about communication. It's about making sure that we understand what each of those pieces do and what each of those pieces can or cannot do to help make sure that you get uh, good tenants within your location. You should have a contact for each step of this process. So as someone moves in in one of our programs or as you're looking at potentially becoming a landlord for our providers, you should have contacts for each of these. You should know who a housing locator is. You should know who a housing navigator is. You should know who a case manager is. Now, sometimes case managers do multiple jobs and they may be the housing navigator as well as the case manager. But in other situations, you'll have different people that you're working with for these different, very specific and unique pieces. MDHA has two of these um, staff on, on our um, roles. And if you look in the chat, you'll see that they are with us today. Um, Lajana Carter is our housing locator with MDHA. Um, and so if you see that you don't know Lajana or have not met Lajana yet, please reach out to her in the chat and ask her for her information so that she can share that with you. The ho our housing navigator is Cal Martinez um, and she is also in the chat and would be happy to talk with any landlords that have not met her yet or talk to her about the housing navigation piece. Of course, the case management piece, as I said, really is done by provider with each of the different providers throughout our continuum of care. And finally, the last but not least, let MDH know when something is not working so that we can help. As the lead agency for the continuum of care, it's our job to help communicate uh, effectively between each of our providers and each of our landlords to help them understand when something's not working. We all want this to work. We all want our relationships to work. We all want to do the best that we can to absolutely make the residents experience and 
the landlord's experience the best experience that it can be. And I will stop sharing and say thank you very much again to our landlords. Um, thank you to all of our providers that are on uh, this luncheon as well. And thank you for everyone um, for sponsoring and supporting and being part of this luncheon today. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carl, for uh, your presentation on making your rental experience excellent. Hopefully we will get some uh, great uh, tenants for the apartments. And it's a little bit frozen on Carl. Is, I hope it's okay. All right, well, we're gonna move on. Hmm. Okay, so we'll move on to the exciting part of the presentation and that is handing out awards to the, um, to those who uh, were nominated and deserve an award this year. Uh, we didn't get as many responses back as we would have liked to, but we were able to fairly grade the responses that we did receive and so we want to, of course, um, award those nominees who are deserving. Um, so today I will be assisted by Nissi New and Alex Espinosa, who are our other two vice presidents here at MDHA. And so I will start us off um, with the Small Property Award. So the, small, the 2020 Small Property of the Year Award goes to Urban Village, which is managed by Mr. Cliff Freeney. This property was nominated by Daniel Daniels with the city of Dallas. And they're receiving this award because Mr. Freeney and staff always go above and beyond to help clients with housing barriers. So Urban Village managed by Mr. Cliff Freeney is receiving the 2020 Small Property um, of the Year Award. And a small property is one that has less than uh, 50 units or less. So congratulations to Urban Village. And then we also wanted to give an honorable mention to a small property. And so the 2020 Small Property of the Year Honorable Mention Award goes to Wind Ward 2 condos or condominiums which are managed by OM Real Estate uh, and Dillip Patel. So Mr. Patel and Windward Two Condos uh, gets the 2020 Small Property of the Year Honorable Mention. This property was nominated by Jerrica Dewey at Endeavors. And Jerrica writes, Mr. Patel goes above and beyond and genuinely cares for people. He is our favorite landlord as he Instead of adding two barriers, he removes barriers. So this landlord, Mr. Patel, is um, awesome in that he helps the clients with re removing barriers instead of adding more to. So when we're two condos, wins the 2020 Small Property of the Year Award, uh, honorable mention award. Uh, and so next up, we have Missy New, and she's going to introduce our next two winners. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Misty New. I'm the VP of Operations here at MDHA, and I have the extreme pleasure of uh, announcing the 2020 Large Property of the Year. So this property was nominated multiple times by case managers from the Bridge and MetroCare. Um, this property strives to provide clean and safe housing for our homeless individuals, which is incredible. And it's something that is um, you know, we want everyone to live in well-maintained conditions and just because a person is homeless, they don't deserve anything different. So this year's uh, 2020 property, large property of the year award goes to Five Trees, managed by Mr. John Gerwig. So John and Five Trees, thank you so much for all of your service. Um, and our 2020 large property of the year honorable mention um, goes to a property that was or nominated by McKenzie with City House. These ladies work directly with City House to ensure that each program client remains housed. And that pro large property of the year honorable mention goes to Garden Gate Apartments um, managed by Daisy and Amy. So Daisy and Amy, thank you for all of your wonderful help. 
I'm going to hand it off to Alex. Hello, everybody, and I am glad we all are here uh, together. Um, I am going to announce the 2020 property staff slash landlord award for the small properties and the award goes again for Mr. Dilip Patel and what Siobhan was saying, uh, Mr. Patel has been nominated because he cares about the client, not only when the client is enrolled in the program, but after the client exit, um, Mr. Patel has um, shown a lot of interest in keep working. Um, on the on the life of working or being involved in the life of these uh, clients, so Mr. Patel, congratulations! And uh, my second award is for the 2020 Property Slash Landlord Award for the large property, and that goes to Kim Kim Price at Sprint Ridge. Two, Mr. Miss Price, um, she uh, runs a second. Uh, chance listing um, properly and she is giving clients hope. She goes above and beyond and a lot of times she actually has a store um, meals, food, water in her office for those uh, residents that uh, maybe cannot afford and have a hard time getting these items. Thank you very much and congratulations. All right. So we were so super excited that these properties uh, and uh, staff, landlords and property managers uh, received an award today and they will be receiving their award by mail um, along with a nice token of our appreciation. So if you were a winner, just expect your gift by mail. It's coming soon. Last but certainly not least, we want to turn it over to Ian Mattingly, a new friend to MDHA. As uh, Ian is the president-elect, he wanted to make sure I got that correct, of the <laughs> Apartment Association of Greater Dallas. He said he's only there until uh, I think January and then they will be selecting someone new. But we um, extend this opportunity to Ian to uh, give us a charge and some direction to go in. So I'll turn it over to you, Ian, welcome. Thank you so much, Siobhan, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to address this incredible group of, of property owners and managers and care providers. Um, as president-elect of the Apartment Association of Greater Dallas, which, which many of you are members and, and know, is the second largest local apartment association in the nation, um, I've had the great privilege to meet and spend time with uh, many of our over 1,700 members. And while they, like this group, uh, all have a unique story and unique circumstances. I found that there's, there's one thing that they all uh, almost without fail have in common. And that is one uh, that not one of them uh, found their career in rental housing on purpose. You know, for many of us, it was, it was a part-time job in the summer before college that became a full-time job, then a career and a passion and our shot at the American dream. For some of us, it's a way to supplement our retirement. Um, but each of us has found a way of life providing homes for others. And that has enabled us to provide homes for our families in turn. And in short, we've all found opportunities in housing. And that's something that we have in common with the clients of the Metro Dallas Homeless Alliance and their care network. For them, like for us, housing is an opportunity perhaps the greatest opportunity. Stable housing offers formerly homeless individuals like Councilman Grady, greater access to healthcare, financial resources, and the help that is available through this continuum of care network. Unfortunately, as the Councilman alluded, the homeless population does appear to be on the rise even before the financial uh, and housing impacts of, of COVID-19. At the point in time count in January, there was an 11.5% increase in the number of unsheltered homeless. And undoubtedly, as the councilman mentioned, that number has risen as shelters have implemented occupancy restrictions and taken the necessary steps to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And perhaps most tragically, you know, as John Gillespie's experience indicates, uh, over 300 of these individuals were veterans. 
returned from service to our country to a life in shelters or on the street. And so I ask you, on behalf of the Metro Dallas Homeless Alliance, their care providers, the Apartment Association of Greater Dallas, to join John and WAK management and consider how your networks, your friends, your colleagues, and you who are pursuing opportunities in housing can share that opportunity with your communities and with these veterans. Let's turn our passion for housing into their shot at the American dream. Let's end veterans homeless in Dallas, one veteran at a time. Thank you and God bless. All right. So <clears throat> thank you to Ian and his charge. Ian is charging us with ending veteran homelessness. And so um, following us, following MBHA on our blog and other works that we will be doing, you'll see that there's going to be lots more work coming um, in the upcoming weeks on ending veteran homelessness. And that's something that we are looking to do uh, by the end of next year. Hopefully by this time next year, um, we're looking to end veteran homelessness. And so stay tuned because there's going to be much more news about that. We are going to be asking our landlords or leaning on our landlords to give, uh, to offer us more units um, so that we can house our veterans um, and in veteran homelessness. We are so close to uh, having a home for each veteran um, that we've chosen that as a target for next year. So in closing, David, do you have any other closing remarks or anything? Because if not, I can close us out with I, a joke. I'm, I do. My, my, my closing remark is, um, let's see, can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay. Yes, you're good to go. Yeah, my, my closing remark is to thank Siobhan Moore for doing such a great job as an MC, but for doing an even better job as the person who runs the program side of our operation. And um, it's a pleasure uh, working with the program side of our operation to pull off this, uh, this event every year. And um, just in case uh, you didn't catch on to it in the chat, this is being recorded. And so if anybody uh, tragically uh, did not have the chance to join us, uh, we are going to put this up on the web and uh, let's, uh, let's send it out to as many people as possible. So as many people as possible can watch it and we can inspire many more uh, landlords and property managers and, and, and everyone to uh, help us end homelessness because we need all hands on deck. So thank you all very much. One last joke. One last joke. One last joke. Okay, Stravon ends with a joke. Go for I it, I gotta Siobhan. get it in. I got to. Okay. My landlord calls me and says he needs to come and talk to me about my uh, high utility bill. I told him, come on over. My door is always open. And so that, you guys have a great afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>